Okay, so in this video, I'd like to show um, how we could use a list in CMU and whether or not uh, it might apply to a situation that you would encounter in your project. And, you know, it might, in many ways, it could be used to solve a lot of problems that would, you know, be difficult to solve without having access to, to, to using it. Um, you know, a good starting point to this might be just to remember what we, you know, wh how we can store values uh, currently. And in many games, we've been doing all sorts of things with the variables. So I'll just do a few things down here in the console. So if we had a, you know, a game with some kind of score, like we created Pong at one point in uh, my class, and we'd store an integer in that in a variable to represent what that player's score was and we can you know main you know maintain that um, value in there or we can uh, oops I'm just totally we can um, you know modify that value or increment that value and uh, that's been obviously a really important part of programming um, and, and a very useful tool um, the limitation with that, of course, is that you can only store one singular value in that variable. So, you know, what what, what other options do we have? So a, a list in Python, kind of similar to something else you might hear talked about in programming called an array, which uh, looks like that. Um, uh, but a list in Python is this, you know, way to store multiple values at once. So if we had a, I don't know why, but if we had a list of scores for some reason, we could store multiple scores in there. I'm going to type a square bracket here and I'll just place a number of values in there and close it with a square bracket. So scores, as you can see, has uh, one, two, three, four, five values stored in it, all separated by commas and surrounded by these square brackets. Some people equate this to a kind of filing cabinet. So, you know, if a variable is a kind of a, a box that you can place a value in to store it and you can retrieve it later, then the list is a kind of filing cabinet where you have multiple drawers in which these values can be placed and then we can, you know, take them out and do stuff with them later on. These are numbered, are, are the way that we access these values is through what's called an index, it's simply a number that represents which which you know, drawer in the filing cabinet we're interested in. And those numbers actually start at zero. So if I were to ask for the first value in this list, I would ask for um, the value appearing at index zero, and that would be by typing the word score, square bracket, and the zero with the closing bracket. And that three is in the first position, and the zero is the the number of that first position, the index it's called. So if I were to ask for the uh, second value, it would be at index one. And I could ask for right up to the last value, which is at index four. And you'll notice that if you have five values, you're always the last, the index of the last value is always going to be one less than the number of values because you started counting from zero. So if you had counted from one, that would have been index five, but because we count from zero, that actually ends at index four. If you asked for index five, then you wouldn't be surprised to see that you would get an error that the list, because the list doesn't have that index in it, then the error is an out of range, index out of range error. Okay, so you have to be careful when you're working with lists that you ask for, that you use indexes uh, that are valid, Otherwise, you're going to uh, end up generating an exception like this. You can find out how many values are in a list by asking for its length. It's the function length, or len, L-E-N. Um, you can think of it as length, and that tells us five, which is the, you know, what we counted when we looked at that, uh, when we created that list initially. There are many um, methods that you can use w with respect to lists. This doesn't, this little console doesn't auto complete, so I can't tab and list the values. So I've just Googled it. The first um, 
uh, website that comes up if you Google Python lists is the W3 schools. And down here under list methods, they have a list of all of the different methods that we can use to um, modify and operate uh, and do different operations on lists. So a really common one is the append method. So if I were to look at my list now, I can see that 23 is the last value. And if I append a minus one to my list, then what ends up happening is I add onto the end, and the end being the rightmost value, I add a minus one. Okay, this has none here because the append method itself doesn't return anything. It just simply operates on the list itself and inserts this minus one into the list at the last position. So now I have a list of uh, six values with a minus one at the very end. And there, you know, there are other methods there that will do other things. Um, for instance, we could insert a value at a different position by using the insert method. And, uh, you know, that you just have to kind of look, look at this. This is a, a good website for um, someone new to Python lists to kind of learn how to work them. And it explains, you know, what is, uh, you know, what's required of this method. So it wants the position that the value is going to be inserted at and the actual value itself. Um, they're calling an element. Uh, and we can just try that out. So it's scores.insert. I'll say at position two, and I'll add the value nine, four nines there. And position two is zero, one, two. So what's going to happen is that this, at this position, a two is going to be inserted, and the others are going to have to shift to the right to accommodate it. Okay, so that 999 was inserted at position two. Remember, we count from zero. So this is zero, one, two. This is index two here. We should call it index two. And all the other position, position, the all the other elements in the list shifted to the right. Um, so, and of course, our length of our scores list has increased by one more. Now, a common thing to do with a list, well, actually, I'll say a couple other things quickly as well. You'll, you'll notice I've used integers throughout this list. It's, it's very common to, you, you, you don't, that is not a rule. You can insert different types into a list. You don't, first of all, you don't have to just use integers in a list. So let's say I were to um, create a new list. I could have a list of names that might have uh, um, a series of strings in it. And, uh, and I could add other, other strings to it. I also could add an integer into this list. So this is where I was going originally. So we have a list here that is not, um, you know, composed of all values of the same type. This is a string and this is an integer. And I'm just pointing out that generally speaking, you don't, you don't do this. You, it's, you know, it's very, uh, typically you want to have a list that has all of, all of the same types in it. This often is not a great idea, but we'll just leave that for another, another discussion. <laughs> um, but what, what I'd like to do also is just talk about a for loop for a moment because they're so they're so closely tied to lists and they're really useful um, with the with with the list data type. So uh, so a for loop um, is a way to uh, pro, you know go through each of the values within a list one at a time. So uh, what so what we're talking about is let's look at our list again, scores. Um, what if I wanted to find out what each value was and print them all out? Well, I could try typing them all out. So I could, you know, I could say print scores at index zero, and then I could say print the value at, at index one, and so on. And, and I could work through the list one at a time. Um, but more, uh, a more uh, typical way to do that would be to loop through it so I'll just say for s 
Well, S will be a singular score. So for S and scores, print, oops. Um, how am I going to do this? I'll have to go over here. So I'll just grab my list and I'll reassign it in this editor version of it. So, and then I'll say for S in scores, print S. So if I run this, what you'll see come out is every value in the list one at a time. And they're on, they're on different lines. They're on new lines, each of them, because print always after it prints whatever's in the parenthesis always adds a new line so that the next value appears below the first value. So it's printed them all out. This variable here, I did not create. You can, you know, I created the list, uh, I assigned it here. This I did not create. This was created automatically for me and each value is pulled out one at a time in sequence and insert it in this variable so that I could print it by the for loop. The for loop did the work of that for me and it printed them all out. So if this were, I don't know, it could be anything where we have a way to uh, get access to each value in turn. Let me just go back down to here. Um, this console doesn't quite work the way most do, but let me just access index zero and I'll just do what we've done with variables quite often. You know, this is assignment one equal sign. And what I'm saying is I want the current value at the first position of the list at index zero, and I want to add one to it. Maybe we'll add 10 to it. So it's currently at F, it's currently a three. And if I add, uh, so if I retrieve it, find out it's a three, add 10, I'll, 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 this expression will give me the value 13, which I'll then store back, assignment, store it back in at that position. So if I do that and then ask for scores, you'll see that this value is changed to 13. Now I cannot do that using this. Okay, so I'll just run this code. And what I'll do in the end is I will print out the scores. And we'll see if we were able to add 100 to all these values. So I'm, I'm coming back over here. This list will be reinitialized with these values. Then I'm going to loop through each value and add 100 to it. And I'm going to look back at the list and see what I got. So this is the final list after it was printed by line seven here. And you'll notice that these values weren't changed at all. And you wouldn't be surprised maybe if you thought about it for a moment because this value was kind of retrieved out of the list and stored in this temporary variable, um, this accumulator variable, where the accumulator variable was modified on line four with this assignment, but it didn't do anything to store it back into uh, to, to didn't modify the actual value in the um, in the list itself. And you might be wondering how we would do that. And in order to do that, we need to use another uh, function in Python. We need to be able to loop through these values one at a time, and uh, and then restore them back in the list with a new value. Like for instance, we want to be able to say, oh, we'll score whatever the index is, we want to, you know, modify that and add 100 to it. Remember, that's a short form for saying scores at i plus integer 100. So we need a way of generating all the, all the indices in the list, which go from 0 to 1 minus the length of the list, I think, which is uh, index 6 at this point because there's seven values here. Now, a really easy way to do this is to I'll just start over again. So I, I, I'm going to use a function in Python called range. 
and range is a really useful function when working with lists. It generates a list of, you know, it in, can kind of be thought of as generating a list of indices for us automatically. So if I have seven items in a list and I ask for range seven, it doesn't print them all out here. Um, I have no choice but to kind of just do it. Let me just forget about our list for a moment. Let me just use this range statement and see what I get combined with a for loop. So I'm really kind of moving a little bit fast through all of this, but uh, so we can just ignore this for now and we can kind of ignore the list for a moment too. So all we're doing is a for loop. We're using this range statement and what I'm saying range does is it generates kind of uh, all of the indices that you could expect. It, it, it generates a list of integers basically that start at zero and it goes increments up one at a time until seven of them are generated. So that should sound familiar. That's starting at zero and then ending at six because we have, uh, because you know, when we count from zero, we, um, you know, we end one less than what uh, our count is. So range seven gives us a, a count of seven indices starting at zero, first one is zero, and the, all the way up to six. But I think this is intentional because this meshes exactly with being able to work through a list of length seven, which is what we have here. So let's just try that. I'll kind of create this again. And what we'll print here instead of the value i is the value in the list, the element what is the value in the list stored at in index i? And there you can see them all coming out. And we can keep working this up. We can add 100 to them. We haven't modified these. So why don't we actually store that value back in the list at the value at the index i? And then we can print out our list and see what we ended up with. You might not be surprised to see that now we have a modified list where everything has been uh, uh, moved up by 100. We added 100 to each value. So that that's kind of like the basic operations of a list. I, I'm going to stop there. I haven't incorporated any of the graphics in CMU, but I, I'll stop there and I'll, I'll try another video where I throw some ideas together where this kind of combines with some uh, uh, shapes, some shape objects within CMU.